Hi everyone, um, I'm in the airport in Vancouver. I'm about to fly home after my surgery and uh, it was two days ago and I feel pretty good. Um, as I wrote on Facebook, I was able to walk out of the, the clinic um, after just a quick recovery and uh, I'm a little slow moving right now, but I feel pretty good. I wanna thank everyone for the the love and support that people have given me and um, the, you know, it's it's a scary thing to, to find out you have cancer and to find out that someone you know has it. But um, I wanna say like from my first video, I don't know if it came across cause I tend to move between subjects a lot and I apologize for that, but um, one in two males are predicted to get cancer at this time and one in three females. And I think that that's appalling. And um, don't let my suffering be your suffering. Uh, please listen to what I have to say because it might save your life or it might save you from some suffering. And I mean, like there's different degrees of suffering. Some people die within weeks of finding out they have cancer. Some people die horrible deaths, more so I would say from chemotherapy and radiation than from the cancer themselves. I'm not an expert, but that's um, that's what I hear. And uh, you know, me, I caught it relatively soon, even though it was six months that I had symptoms and I tolerated those symptoms. And I mean, those different levels of pain, I mean, you do not want to end up with a tube in your penis. Like putting your penis in a hole, that's one of my favorite things to do, like top of the list type of thing. But you definitely do not want something stuck in the hole of your penis. It is not fun. And I mean, when that happened to me and I saw cancer growing inside my body on a screen, that scared the shit out of me. And um, I did a lot of research and uh, there's a great series called The Truth About Cancer that isn't just about cancer, it's about um, about nutrition and you can like I'm an engineer I'm not a, a health practitioner but there are a lot of doctors and health experts that they interview in this series that talk about nutrition and preventing this dis-ease not disease dis-ease and I mean right now we live in this perfect recipe for creating cancer we have incredibly stressful lives we have toxic food which is sprayed with chemicals that grows in soil devoid of nutrients now because we've killed everything off. And um, our gut bacteria are dying. Our, um, we're exposed to toxins everywhere. And it's no wonder that one in two men and one in three women would get cancer. I find, like this is insane. And like there's another video that I highly recommend. I watched it again last night. It's called A World Without Cancer. And they explain that, that cancer is basically a vitamin deficiency, uh, just like scurvy was. And then they found out, oh, well, we put vitamin C in the boats to go overseas and people won't get scurvy. Well, they're basically saying in this video that vitamin B17, which is something that used to be in the diets of many people, um, is no longer in the diets of many people and it, it can prevent this. And you can watch video after video of people on the internet saying, hey, I've cured myself from terminal cancer and from various other cancers by eating apricot seeds and apple seeds and stuff that is supposedly um, toxic. And they explain in that video, like the cyanide and benzaldehyde is a stable element until it finds a cancer cell and then the cancer cell goes mmm food and then it tries to eat it and then the these targeted poisons basically kill the the cancer cells and you might be saying well why isn't that common knowledge why isn't that uh, why isn't that a cancer medicine it's because it's naturally incurring occurring in nature and drug companies cannot patent naturally occurring things so they have a vested interest. They make hundreds of billions of dollars a year on you not knowing that. And if you can eat a couple apricot seeds a day, they taste, they're really bitter. They don't taste very good, but they're kind of like almonds. I would eat the, I'm gonna keep eating them for the rest of my life uh, because I'm not gonna go through that shit again. And I don't want anyone I love or care about to go through it either. 
Um, so I highly recommend you spend an hour and watch that, that show. And if you're serious about nutrition and like, I mean, I, I could talk and talk and talk for hours about this now that I have, have experienced all of these things. Um, but like, we are nature, we are animals. And the thing that is going to keep us healthy is giving our bodies proper nutrition. Um, I used to think probiotics were a bunch of bullshit. Like, I, I literally did. And now it's like, okay, we need to make sure that our stomachs can absorb the nutrients that we ingest. Otherwise, we're going to be sick. And, like, GMO crops I mentioned in my first video, like, they literally are sprayed with a thing that... Uh, glycophosphate which kills everything except the GMO crop and then we ingest these GMO crops and we're not allowed to even get them food labeled because the lobbyists pay off the politicians and whoever else they need to pay off so that these things keep going we are part of a system a system that makes tons and tons of money off of suffering and like I said before it's not reported in the mainstream because the people, the companies that use these products. But yeah, the, the, you're not going to learn this in the mainstream because there is too much money to be made from advertising for drugs. There's too much money to be made for advertising for food that uses these things. Roundup is used everywhere. I'm from Saskatchewan and it's used everywhere. And yeah, if you want to build a monoculture crop, acres and acres for as far as the eye can see, then yeah, you need to spray that stuff on the food, but that's not how nature works at all. It's no wonder a pest can take off if you've got only one type of food, and that's why permaculture and other um, ways of growing food are so important, and uh, we need to get back to that. Why don't we invent machines where you can grow every crop in a field at the same place and have the soil regenerate itself and the machine just sorts everything. There's an idea for you Monsanto. Build something like that. Automation, AI and robotics will take care of that. We don't need to own life. Um, it's insane that a company thinks it can own life. Life was not meant to be owned by a company. Um, but yeah, there's, there's too much suffering that's happening. And people need to wake up and see that this is part of a system that makes a lot of money, that is there to make money for shareholders. Shareholders don't give a shit about your health. Sorry to swear, but they don't care, okay? When, when these companies make profit based on selling things, it's in their best interest to have a bunch of sick people. And I don't want anyone I care about to be sick and uh, go through the stuff that I've just gone through. And like I said, I've gone through nothing. I know uh, someone who uh, just had part of her colon removed and uh, we both knew that we had cancer and so we started chatting and we've been keeping in contact. I have another friend who was two weeks away from dying and he actually benefited from chemo and radiation. And I mean, I'm not saying that those things can't help, but you want to avoid those at all costs because they both destroy the immune system and the gut bacteria along with the cancer cells and um, the immune system is really the key to fighting these diseases and uh, it's it's overburdened in our society like even if you're eating a bunch of heavy meats and stuff like I have done and I'm gonna be changing my diet big time but if you're uh, this is really key I didn't understand this if you're body your your guts are too busy digesting heavy food or your probiotics are out of whack your immune system kicks in and tries to digest food for you and then it misses the cancer cells because everyone literally has cancer in their body that's what I forgot to say at the beginning is everyone literally has cancer in their body at all times the difference between me and or not me anymore because I had it removed, but the difference between someone who has cancer and someone who doesn't have cancer is that the immune system killed off those cells before they could take hold and mimic a, um, a, an embryo, a placenta. And then it's too late. The, the immune system needs help after that. And you can understand that from watching the videos that I'm gonna post here. But, you know, please share this 
uh, if you care to, I don't care, but I mean, like, thank you for your love and support, but give it to your friends and family too, because um, this is gonna affect everyone if we don't wake up and start seeing what's really happening. So I'm gonna cut it off because I'm at 10 minutes minus whatever I have to uh, delete. So love you all and thanks for watching, bye.